Hey, Industry 4.0 friends, have you ever come across something called the Zachman framework? Generally curious here. I suspect that um, uh, many people in manufacturing and process automation, practitioners who are concerned with, again, implementing the OT, the operational technologies inside an enterprise, probably haven't come across the Zachman framework. So leave a comment on this post if you have heard of the Zachman framework and tell me a little bit about where you heard about it and uh, whether you actually apply it in your process automation and manufacturing uh, discipline. Generally curious. Suffice to say that the Zachman framework has been around for a very long time. It's one of those time-tested um, um, concepts and uh, ontologies. And I think that's really the beauty of the Zachman framework is that it is not prescriptive. It doesn't tell you what you have to do. And it certainly doesn't uh, try to impose a standard or a method, but it is a great set of placeholders which are related to each other in a very sound way. And effectively, the Zachman framework is a six by six matrix of rows and columns. And uh, the rows really uh, cover different layers within the enterprise. And the columns deal with uh, actually the key questions, which are what, how, uh, where, who, when, and why. Okay, and it's really great because those columns really are, 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 are keyed around the key um, uh, ways you would ask questions and uh, would obviously then map those questions to um, a particular uh, set of activities or a set of um, uh, things or a set of reasons. And um, again, my favorite and probably the most important one is the why column. It's the motivation and the intentions. And if we go about applying the Zachman framework well in our enterprise and we capture the reasons alongside the other questions or the other answers that we need to, um, uh, again, consider, then we will be able to preserve institutional memory because we will effectively end up with some kind of blueprint where the reasons why we chose to do things in a certain way or where we chose to do them or how we chose to do them, they're documented. Because the worst thing that can happen is when you lose institutional memory. You've lost the, uh, um, the, the, the original reasons why something was implemented in a particular way. And I'd say this uh, is that once you have at least got your motivations and intentions down, then you can really start looking at things like uh, the what, right? What is the inventory set that we have um, uh, for a given um, uh, layer within the enterprise? The how, what are our processes and our process flows? And again, this is great because you can not only look at process flow within a layer, but you can look at the relationship between process flows between layers. And then we also have where, you know, geographically, uh, functionally, where do things happen and where are things meant to happen? And I think this is great because that gives you the concept of space, uh, both space geographically and space functionally. Next one is who, which really gives us our roles and responsibilities. So who is going to do this? Who is doing it? Who needs to do something? And again, that uh, really allows you to define the actors and uh, 
what they are responsible for, who's accountable, etc. And you can start applying various techniques to be able to, again, further uh, detail the actual roles and responsibilities. Great stuff, because Zachman Framework doesn't tell you, you need to define responsibilities in a certain way. Uh, you know, you need to apply a RACI matrix, responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed. Um, and then the last one we have, uh, the sixth one, is when, you know, timing cycles. When do things need to happen? You know, is this a fast loop? Is it a slow loop? Is it something in between? Um, and then you can also, by looking at the layers and the speed of decision making, the speed of insights that occur at different layers, you can then hook in um, fast and slow loops and relate them together. So for me, Zachman's a really brilliant uh, tool and a brilliant framework for, uh, again, uh, applying other tools in the toolbox. So I've just covered the column. Columns. I'll just briefly touch on the rows. So the rows really uh, start at the very highest level, which is your executive level, which is scope. And again, this really has got to do with the mission, the values, the principles, uh, the uh, and 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 again. Um, the uh, you know, reason for you know a particular enterprise's existence. What value uh, do our customers get from what we do? Right. Um, again, all the questions that I was going through in the last week on my posts, uh, which really touch on that high-level spirit. That really is that executive scope layer. Underneath that, we have the business layer. We have uh, a layer where uh, we define our business management. Uh, we define the key units in the in terms of business, and uh, you know how they are managed, how they directed, how they govern, how 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 are they uh, again uh, able to fulfill the mission and the purpose of the enterprise. And underneath that, the third layer is our architect layer. So this really is a system logic view. And this is where we look at the uh, overall system relationship uh, between uh, not only the um, uh, above and below rows, right? So we've got our business and, and our executive scope above architect. And then below that, we then have our other rows, which has got to do with our engineer row, which has got to do with technology and uh, the um, specifications, uh, the uh, again, the way in which uh, we would go about engineering and implementing that engineering. Underneath that, we obviously have a component layer, which really is, got, is our technician view, right? So this is where, you know, once we've engineered and we've specified things correctly, we can then obviously get into the very nitty gritty details of the implementation. And then underneath that is our operations layer. So this is where our operators live. This is where our uh, actual, you know, the real cold face frontline processes for operations will, 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 will sit. And again, by putting that into a matrix, we can then, uh, again, for each row, we can go through our what, how, where, who, when, and why for each layer. And so that means that we can, again, establish clear reasons for why something is implemented in a certain way in operations. You know, why do we choose this tool, this component, and this particular technique for technicians to actually implement on the details? Why did we choose certain engineering principles and standards uh, to define our way of working. And, you know, why did we choose X or Y, um, you know, um, method or architectural style um, in, in our system logic layer? You know, why did we choose to, uh, again, define our logic in the system in a certain way? And so on. I mean, you get into the business uh, piece and you can decide, well, okay, we decided to apply this particular type of business model. Because when the time comes to actually revisit this framework and to, again, consider reshaping or re um, uh, you know, reorganizing the enterprise architecture, we can go back and we can say, well, you know, this particular, um, um, you know, business model that we chose to 
uh, again, apply, which allowed us to implement our systems in this way and our operations in this way. Well, actually, we want to change our business model. We want to change our business model because, and again, this goes back up to the executive layer, because our mission has shifted right? Or the way in which our customers, uh, you know, gain benefit and, uh, and become, you know, something new, right? Because they love the products that we make and the usefulness that they bring, right? That's shifted. And you see, this gives us a very much more clearer um, uh, way, a layout, right? In this six by six matrix, uh, which again, can guide the rest of the different practitioners, domain experts to actually go about the process. And whether you choose a method like domain-driven design, whether you choose a uh, particular standard and want to be strict to it like ISA 95 or ISA 88, um, you can. You know, you can. It's just that, um, uh, you know, if you choose to do that, right, document the reasons why you chose to. If you chose to do something different and said, well, okay, listen, you know what? We're, we're for, for us, it makes more sense uh, when we are going to implement, uh, you know, a, a, a information models for OT, right, and start linking our systems up. Uh, we'd much rather uh, go with what you know, the OPC Foundation puts down as their recipe, their framework, their method for, again, building information models. Or if you want to go with a more open, uh, again, the unified namespace approach and say, well, okay, you know, we'll build things using MQTT, we'll define topics, etc. We'll set up a namespace for this part, well, we can see where that could fit into the Zachman framework, um, you know, uh, and as long as we are clear on why we chose to do it that way, why it makes sense, how it fits into the system logic, and how it relates to other systems or other IT, other operational technologies that may have nothing to do with manufacturing, then I think we will have achieved something. And that is a good thing. So uh, tell me, if you've heard of the Zachman framework, leave a comment below. Uh, let us know your thoughts. I'll put some links in the uh, post uh, for further reference to uh, basically give you guys some more uh, information, background about Zachman. Um, I swear by it. I've been uh, using and uh, been inspired by the Zachman framework for again, close to 25 years, definitely between 20, 25 years. I first uh, got into enterprise architecture around 2003. And uh, honestly, this has been a great way to frame the conversation and to, again, find alignment between the different layers.